WBZ political analyst John Keller is with us tonight for some expert analysis. John, I know you have a couple of special guests with you, too. Uh, not just special guests, two of the sharper political observers uh, in the city. We're pleased to have with us Wilnelia Rivera, CEO of Rivera Consulting, and Joe Kennedy III, former congressman, founder of the Groundwork Project. Welcome to both of you. So the Associated Press is projecting, and they do this based on uh, uh, turnout. Uh, often they have some bellwether precincts, early reports that they're getting. They're projecting more Healy as the governor-elect. We'll wait for official confirmation of that before we claim it's official, but uh, no big surprise there. Uh, was this a lost opportunity for the Republicans? First of all, if Charlie Baker had been the nominee, would we be talking about a governor elect Healy, Will Nelia? Well, I think, I think what we could say is that it would, be, it would have been a much more competitive election, yeah. right? I mean, I think one thing that um, we've seen overall is that, you know, turnout is pretty comparable to what it was in 2018 when a, uh, it wasn't a competitive election and it was, it was Charlie, Charlie Baker on the, on the, on the ticket. Uh, so I do think that there's still an enthusiasm and maybe an inspiration gap that the Democrats need to dig deeper locally to think about. But I think that overall the campaign that really ran, she ran it in the context of who she was running against. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I think that that's why she ultimately won. Uh, where did deal go wrong, Joe? <laughs> from the beginning, John. <laughs> right? I mean, look, I think from the first start of this, uh, at least from my perspective now, obviously from a bit of a distance, if you are the chair of a presidential campaign in Massachusetts and you lose 60-30, um, so two to one, and then you double down and say, you know what? I'm going to run for governor, and I'm going to run for governor as that guy's campaign chairman. That's probably not the best place to start. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, um, particularly if you've got a Republican governor who is the most popular governor in the country, right? There was a roadmap laid out before Republicans about how to actually go about this job and earn the support of the 60% of voters in the state that are unenrolled voters, yeah. right? That was where, that's where Governor Baker has, has earned his support. And Deal basically said, no thanks, I'll make a hard right turn instead in a state that has showed over and over again. They just don't have much of a stomach for the politics of Donald Trump. Well, in many other states around the country, uh, we'll see how it all turns out tonight. But the projections are that Republicans will have a great night because of the unpopularity of President Biden, uh, runaway <laughs> inflation and all of the consequences that that brings, the havoc it wreaks on people's lives, uh, the uh, botched withdrawal from Afghanistan, the list goes on and on. Here in Massachusetts, you've got on the ballot in the form of question four, a very explosive issue, uh, driver's licenses for undocumented immigrants who are here. Uh, it seemed to me there was plenty of opportunity for a Republican to make gains here. Am I wrong? Is this just a blue state till the end or what? I mean, I think we're, we're moderates, we're progressives, and we're independents. And to, and to Joe's point about us reaching, you know, 60% unenrolled, the other data point in that is that only 30% of the electorate is, also, is actually enrolled in the Democratic Party. Right? So that says something about the electorate overall in the sense that it... it, it it, it's thinking differently for different cycles, whether it's voting for governor or whether it's voting for, for Congress. And I think we know that, generally speaking, across the country. But I think when it comes to Massachusetts, what I've seen over the course of 20 years is that our electorate tends to be more liberal um, and more progressive. And we're voting for federal elections and congressional mm -hmm. um, candidates. Um, and when we're voting for constitutional offices, we really need to look at who, who's actually coming out. Um, and I wouldn't say that it's about the ultra-right. It's that there's a centrist road in Massachusetts with political leanings that are sometimes progressive or sometimes centrist. Can I build yep. on that real quick? Briefly, please. Yep. Uh, Will and Elliot's math is 100% accurate. 60-30, <laughs> that's 10% for Republicans. Thank you. So if you're going to yep. take that Republican base and say, okay, I got 10%, right. you got to get another 40. Right. So that's down the middle. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Mr. Deal's campaign didn't cater to that pathway. More on